This is cast iron, but it's um, it's hardened. I really don't know how they heat treat cast iron, but obviously this is material is harder than uh, than the rotors. Yeah. Well, it has to be because it's spinning at three times the speed of the rotor, speed of the crankshaft, and that thing at any given moment can go eight, ten thousand uh, RPM with all that mass hanging from the outside. So it has to be strong enough to sustain that mass through the uh, sliver that is holding the base to the outer mass. Tilt ahead and uh, take another pass, putting a bevel on the outer edge, and we'll use this one to uh, practice. See how much weight we've actually taken out. This one weighed 1,360 grams, so we'll weigh it. See how much weight we've actually taken off. Um, and uh, evaluate how much less material we can actually get away with. Yeah, we'll have to go down about half the depth. Uh -huh. The depth is actually quite right. We can stick half of that. Depth is good, except we, we can stay all the way out. Just enough to swing it. Well, we're making history, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. The 12A counterweight works. Mm -hmm. Plenty of weight to balance. See, the, the, the actual depth we went down is ideal. You see it right there? Yeah. Except the, the, the bevel, the cut, can be out here instead of in there. Yeah, so you can get away from that thin spot. The angle is perfect on both sides. Look at it over here. And the depth is perfect. Oops. So we are in business. Absolutely beautiful. Clearly and very well. So this will give us the flexibility to use any compression ratio rotors we want. Obviously we want the low compression rotors, we don't have to lighten them. Depends on the state of uh, tune that we wish to take the engine to. That's all controlled by the counterweight? Well, no, it's controlled by the... Uh, the um, the compression ratio, um, you know, as as the rotors became uh, newer and newer, they made them lighter, but they also raised the compression. Um, so the older rotors are heavier. The older rotors are heavier now. Uh, for for um, Davy driver uh, gasoline engines, 
uh, your your uh, third generation rotor is more inadequate. It's good to about 15 pounds of this. Uh, that's all that I will ever tune on those rotors. Beyond that point, they have a tendency to implode. They're quite thin and they're fa fairly light. Um, for my high power engines, we use uh, the 87 Turbo 2 rotor, uh, which has the lowest compression ratio. We can take them down even lower to run a lot of boost with those engines and pump gas. You can make, you know, uh, daily drivers that are making 520, 530 horsepower to the wheels. That's well over 600 on the motor on pump gas. If you want to step up to E85, you can make excess of 750 horsepower. With the 85 being a light fuel, um, you can also use the 86 through 87 non-turbo rotor, the the, the, the six-port rotor. Those are those are more, have more compression than the uh, third-generation rotor. Those are nine to one. They work excellent with the 85. That's more of a racing engine. Uh, a lot of punch from the start. And excellent drag racing motors. Excellent. Uh, uh, track day cars, you know, where where you're racing at, you know, no more than half an hour at a time. Reason being, um, actually the engines are safer. Reason being is that you're consuming 40% more volume of fuel per um, output by volume uh, per BTU actually. And then on top of that, with the turbo, you're also consuming another 30 to 40% more fuel to compensate for the boost. So realistically speaking, a turbo engine running on E85 will consume twice as much fuel as the same engine putting out the same output on pump gas. Twice as much, that's a fact. But it can put out, it can take twice as much boost, maybe even more. So the output is much more. So if you're not gonna push the motor beyond 500 horsepower, there's no sense to going to E85. Um, it does, on the other hand, provide you a great, great, great uh, safety margin. Can't hurt an engine on E85. Where on pump gas, if you're taking already to the 20, 22 pound range, 24 pound range, the slightest glitch in the gasoline that you bought from gas station to gas station can actually take the engine. You've got, once you get into that range, um, with pump gas, you don't have much of a window of, of opportunity for safety. You keep it at about 17 pounds, you're going to be upwards of 450 horse, 430 horse to the wheels, um, and you got all the safety in the world. The rotors you're using on this particular engine are what? The, I'm going to use on all these motors for, for the, the sake of safety and reliability, low compression rotors. Uh, 80, 87 Turbo 2 rotors. That's what these are, the ones you yes, build on? Yes, absolutely. So they actually could take more boost. They can take you. a lot more boost, they can take a lot more pounding, and in <coughs> reality, the person that is going to uh, be doing this type of uh, engine combination or an RX-8 is, is really looking for a lot of power, twice as much as the, uh, the RX-8 engine will have, but not enough to break the transmission. But all he's got to do if he wants to break the transmission and step up to something better, he'll have plenty of motor to go along with that. So the idea is to build the engine um, to a maximum capacity and use 50, 70% of it, you know, uh, because that's all the transmission is gonna take. And most people, you know, these cars are, are barely putting down 180 horsepower to the wheels. You double that to the wheels, most guys will have a green on their face that will wrap themselves <laughs> around from ear to ear and back around. So. You know, but if they want to go more, the limiting factor will be to the transmission. That's it. Cool.